Yar. <laughs> Welcome back to another installment of Birky Butte Camp. I'm Mr. Birky, and today we'll be taking a look at the Franz Strauss Nocturno. This is a great lyrical piece that has a few technical passages sprinkled throughout. My biggest piece of advice when playing this is to blow long phrases that go past the high notes. This will keep your air full and driving through, which will help everything slot into place easier. And, as usual, make sure your air is always coming from a low, centered bracing point below the belly button. Starting at the top, we see the Italian term dolce, which means sweetly. Internalize that mood and use it to reinforce your long phrases. Make the written swells obvious, but don't overdo them. We want to maintain the same tone quality and mood throughout this section. And to help make things as smooth as possible, focus on how your air is connected in between the notes. Make sure it's driving fully from one note to the next without any sort of pause or catch, especially on large leaps. These small catches between notes can sometimes be tricky to overcome, so it might help to sing the part in a legato manner and apply that same type of exhalation when you play it. In bar 14, as soon as you hit the half note, mentally subdivide into triplets so that beats 3 and 4 will be even, and then switch right back into duple time once you get to bar 15. Sing through this a few times with a metronome, as it's easy to want to rush this section. If we take a more relaxed, one might say dolce, approach, our air will be more controlled and stay full, which will make everything come out easier. The second big section of this piece starts at the Pio Animato e Marcato, which translates to a little more animated and marcato. This means we'll be moving a little quicker, and instead of the dolce feeling from the start, we'll be more aggressive and brash. Keep your internal subdivision strong so that there's an obvious difference between triplets and duple rhythms. Maintain the fortissimo dynamic until the marked pianissimo, though at the risoluto marking, we want to be more resolute. Think broader and less aggressive, but still fortissimo. Regain a little bit of the dolce mood at the tempo 1 pianissimo bar, but switch back to the risoluto mood at the mezzo forte. On the descending fortissimo arpeggio, Make it as full as possible, and really drive your air through that descent. It should almost feel like you're crescendoing on the descent, but because we're moving lower in the horn's range, the notes naturally sound a little bit quieter, so the dynamic will sound the same to the audience. In bars 50 and 51, make sure that those are dramatic swells, and really ham up the retardando. The third and final major section of Nocturno starts at the Dolce in bar 61. This is pretty similar to stuff that appears earlier in the piece, so make sure to apply the same concepts of long air phrases, focusing on air connection in between notes, playing broadly instead of aggressively at louder dynamics, and driving down through descending arpeggios. At the end of the piece, we have a bass clef A flat. If you have trouble getting it to speak after all of the higher and louder playing, experiment with opening the jaw more, moving the lower lip in front of the upper lip making your upper lip feel narrower and more focused around the beak at the center of the buzz, and using as little mouthpiece pressure as you can reasonably use. This concludes our general overview, but before I play through, I'd like to talk about one specific topic, grace notes. Grace notes show up in a few different spots in Nocturno, and can seem intimidating at first glance, but if we break them down, they're really not so bad. The ones in bar 12 can be done a few different ways, and I personally like to play them both in the second sixteenth of beat three, like this. However, there is not just one right way to play them, and you may hear some people play them more spread out over the first half of beat three, like this.
Whichever way you end up playing the grace notes, the important thing is that the sixteenths on the second half of beat three are in time. So practice this passage a few times without the grace notes to ensure that we maintain the rhythmic integrity when we add them back in. In bar 13, make sure the grace note comes just before beat four, like this. It may be helpful to lightly tongue this grace note, as well as the one in bar 22, which sounds like this. Because we are leaping up to these grace notes instead of stepping up to them, pay extra attention to your air support, and make sure the air is moving fast enough right at the start of the grace note. I like to play the grace notes in bar 41 the same as I do in bar 13, on the second sixteenth of beat 4. But, as before, you'll also hear some people play them more spread out throughout the first half of the beat. Either way is fine, and they sound like this. The grace notes in bar 67 are a written out turn, and they're much easier to do if you head right into them without spending any more time on the written C than on the grace notes. Divide the first half of beat 2 evenly into 5, and lead smoothly into the written 16ths afterwards. This is another spot where it can be beneficial to practice without the grace notes first to establish the underlying rhythm. It should sound like this. At this point, I'd like to play through the entire piece twice, once at a practice tempo and once at a performance tempo. Feel free to finger or play along. Thank you. 
Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. To close things out, my friends Annie and Sheev are having an important discussion you might want to listen in on. What happened to him? He became so powerful. The only thing he was afraid of was... Chipping a note. Which, eventually, of course, he did. Unfortunately, he taught his apprentice everything he knew. Then his apprentice beat him at an audition. It's ironic. He could save others from chipping notes. But not himself. Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a woodwind. Duh.